So here we go, we're taking another look inside this observation hive, which is occupied by hygienic varroa resistant bees. And what you're looking at here on this frame are eggs from the queen. And we have a black background there. And you notice that there's eggs with no fluid around them. And then you'll see that there are tiny worms, which are the larvae, and they have fluid around them. That is because the moment that those eggs hatch, a nurse bee will get right in there and fill that basin with royal jelly. And the amount of royal jelly that we're seeing here shows us that this hive is just doing extremely well. They're very healthy. If you see that you have larvae in the bottom of those cells and a very sparse amount of royal jelly around them, then your hive is probably not doing so well. Now what we're showing is often as early morning comes along, the interior of your hive will have some condensation in it. A lot of people think that uh, the entire interior space of the hive is regulated by the colony and they dehydrate, they heat it, they cool it, but that's not the case. As you see here, we have the population of the bees a little higher up and you'll see there's a definite line where that condensation follows. This condensation is held down and below the brood frame and it's insulated by the bees. So the bees really cluster up and of course concentrate their efforts on heating and protecting brood frame over everything else, but they certainly do not thermoregulate the entire interior of the hive. Now what we're looking at here is a pollen forager and this bee has brought in little pouches of pollen on its hind legs and doing the waggle dance to explain to the others exactly where it got the pollen. And I want you to notice something else about these bees when they bring in pollen. You'll never see multicolored pollen packs on the bees' hind legs. And that is because they go after a single pollen source during their foraging efforts. Other bees may come in with different colored pollen, but it is never mixed and they will put it directly into pollen storage. Now what we're looking at are cells where the pollen has been dropped off by the field bee directly. And these are pollen workers inside the colony that do not go into the field. And what they're doing is they're mixing that with some nectar and they're sealing up these pollen stores and it will actually ferment. And if you sometimes open up your pollen frames and you're looking at it and it smells funny, that's because there is yeast and it is fermenting and it does put off the scent. In fact, I've found that the bees really go after consuming pollen that is about 48 hours old or they'll take the brand new stuff as well. In some cases, they'll just take old pollen, seal it off, and not use it at all. And you'll see that out in the edges. Pollen, of course, is the number one protein for the entire colony, and it is used to raise brood. So if you don't raise honeybees and you want to do something to support them, provide pollen sources in your garden and other areas. Now here we have the queen. She's roaming around and she's inspecting cells and she is dead center here. And she is about to deposit an egg here in this cell that she's looking over. Now we have this discussion all the time that uh, queens lay 1,700 to 2,000 eggs per day. But I'd like to share that that's actually limited by the number of cells that are even available for her to lay in. In fact, if she's overproductive, the bees will come along right behind her and consume the eggs that she deposits if they feel they have enough or they're running out of space. If they run out of space, you can count on your colony swarming out soon. But the queen will lay her body weight in eggs each and every day. And that's what's going on here. She's going to find another cell and there she goes. She's going to deposit another egg. And of course the eggs take about three days to hatch and then they are larval. While they're eggs, they don't get fed. As soon as they hatch, the nurse bees will get right in there and put some royal jelly. Now again, we're looking at the hygienic aspect of these bees. And there's part of the observation hive here where the field bees come in and they seem to pause. It's almost like a car wash. And they're waiting for the hygienic groomers to show up as this one is doing. And they work over the field bees from head to toe. They clean underneath their wings, they groom their abdomens, their thorax, and they even, as this one's about to do, get a little taste of the nectar that they've gathered while they were out. So it's a very interesting behavior and also why we've been unable to find any varroa in this colony. 
we don't treat for varroa if we can't find them. So it's very interesting, hygienic varroa resistant bees uh, demonstrate this grooming behavior and they also will clean cells and they'll even remove a bee that's developing in its pupa stage, larva stage, capped. And they'll tear open the cap and remove the bee itself before it hatches if they think something's wrong. Now we're just looking at a brood area and these bees are ventilating it and they're keeping the air moving over the surface of the brood. And you'll notice that you can see the abdomen of some of the workers that are deep inside there which are continuing to feed the royal jelly to those developing larvae. Now what you're seeing, a little left to center there, is a drone that's hatching out. Drones do not hatch themselves, the workers do it. If you've ever seen a worker hatch, she hatches herself out, cleans her cell, moves on and goes right into cleaning duties. This uh, drone, as it hatches out, is just poking everyone for food. There's another one to the left of it that is completely out as well. And watch in a minute here and you'll see he pokes with his tongue the nurse bees and he's demanding food. All the drone does is sit around consuming resources in the hive and wait for a virgin queen to mate with. Now you may think that that sounds interesting but actually this time of year we're in November these drones have already been pulled out of the hive and they have been ejected into the environment to die. The workers do not put up with drones through winter and they don't want to feed them resources that cannot be replenished. So here's an overview of the actual observation hive again, just a portion of it. We're looking at the outside frames of an eight frame observation hive. And I hope you got something out of watching this video and I appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. Thank you.